Transforming Curriculum and Assessment. What exactly does that mean to me as an educator in the classroom? If we look at the old IRPs, as a teacher, I use this document to find what it is I'm supposed to teach, the PLOs. To find the PLOs, I usually open the IRP document, either the PDF from the website or perhaps a paper copy at my school, and I skim past all of the front matter. I know that it includes the rationale and goals for science education, which are important, but as teachers, we are usually too busy to read through this information as we look for the PLOs. So I continue to scroll through this very long document. And here it is, the first page of content. I have skipped past the skills because in our current curriculum, the major focus is on vocabulary and content knowledge. This page gives me a nice summary of vocabulary terms and content knowledge, as well as skills and attitudes I should be developing. But this second page is really what I'm looking for. Here we find the achievement indicators, complete with checkboxes. These are incredibly detailed lists of content that let me, as the teacher, know exactly what I need to teach for each unit. Because every teacher in the province is working through the same checklist, I should be able to develop a test or assessment that can be used in classrooms across the province. Even though teachers may be choosing different delivery models, we are all using the same checklist of achievement indicators, and so the learning in each classroom should be essentially the same. This is not the philosophy of the new curriculum. Looking at the new curriculum website, we can see that it looks completely different. Instead of a static PDF, now each curriculum document is laid out as a single dynamic web page. Regardless of grade or subject, the general layout of information is consistent and allows for quick navigation to the new components of the curriculum. At the top, we can see the name of the course and the grade level. You can quickly and easily change between grade levels with these number links. If you would like a paper copy, as before, to keep in your binder or take to a meeting, you can easily save a PDF or a Word document in English or in French. New to our education model are the fundamental K-12 core competencies, the aspects of communicating, thinking, and personal social responsibility are easily accessible through these links. Also new to this curriculum is the KDU model, Know, Do, Understand. No longer is the focus dominated by detailed content. Knowing is still a part of the curriculum, but the acquisition and demonstration of skills and processes is now greatly emphasized. Through knowing foundational content and experiencing its application through inquiry and activities, students will be able to develop a true understanding of the big ideas for each subject. The big ideas, or enduring understandings, are presented in these large, hard-to-miss white bubbles. They are front and center and provide the overarching framework and goals of each course. The bottom section is the comparable piece to the current PLOs, and there really isn't that much to compare. Instead of pages of achievement indicators divided up by unit or section, all of the learning standards are listed simply in two columns. The space is dominated by the left-hand column, and that wasn't by accident. This large section is where the skills and processes are, now named the curricular competencies. And the expectation is that students will be constantly engaged with these skills through inquiry and other activities for the majority of class time. The smaller right-hand column lists the content learning standards. While these are similar to the current PLOs, the new learning standards are very different from the itemized checklist format of the current achievement indicators. The learning standards are written more broadly to enable students to explore the topics. If you hover over the bold words, a window pops up. This is a suggested depth and breadth. The suggested pop-up windows are by no means mandated or required. They are simply elaborations that the curriculum teams included to give direction to teachers who are looking for a little more insight into the content. Teachers are free and encouraged to go as deeply as they and their students choose for any and all of these content learning standards. For teachers that are not wholly comfortable with the topics listed, the elaborations are a good place to start a Google keyword search to find out more information. The KDU model, which has an emphasis on competencies, coupled with the open nature of the content learning standards, now prevents me from being able to design a content-based assessment for my class that would be applicable to any other class in BC. 
With its open and flexible nature, the new model enables true personalization that will reflect the individual strengths and passions of BC students and teachers.